Hi class! Today, we are going to discuss estimation and hypothesis testing about the difference between two population means for small and independent samples when the standard deviations are unequal and unknown. First and foremost, you need to check that the two populations under consideration are normally distributed. Secondly, the samples must be small samples where the samples from the first population is less than 30 and the samples from the second population is also less than 30, as well as both groups must be independent. Thirdly, you need to ensure that the standard deviation, the population standard deviations, sigma 1 and sigma 2, are unknown and unequal. When all of these conditions are satisfied, we will be using the t-distribution with the formulas that we will discuss in a short while. In the case when the sample size is small and the population standard deviations are unknown and unequal, so in this case, the sample standard deviation of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is similar to the formula for when the sample size are large. However, the formula for the degrees of freedom for the t distribution in this case is quite complicated. Not to worry, the formula is provided in your final exam, as we will see when we try out the example. Another important matter that you need to consider is that if the degrees of freedom gives you a decimal value, you need to round down on the value to the nearest integer. The formula for the confidence interval and the formula for the test statistics is similar to the ones we have previously discussed. Please note that we always use the t distribution. Okay, we have come to when we would now discuss the example of a question. So I've selected a past year final exam question. This was the question from the previous year. Now this question is a complex question and it's one of the more difficult questions of last year. Let's try this one out. The question says, two machines are used for filling plastic bottles with a net volume of 474 milliliters. The fill volume can be assumed to be normally distributed with the important part unequal and unknown population standard deviations. An engineer suspects that both machines fill to the same mean net volume, whether or not this volume is 474 milliliters. So random sample of 10 bottles is taken and you are to decide whether the engineer is correct or not. So let's start with the null and alternative hypothesis. Okay, so the engineer suspects that both machines fill to the same mean net volume. That means what he suspects is that mu1 is equals to mu2. This is when the engineer is correct. Okay, and the alternative must be mu1 is not equals to mu2. And this is when the engineer is incorrect. Alright, so the sample size for the first machine is 10, similar to the sample size for the second machine. The values of the sample mean and the sample standard deviation needs to be calculated. The next step is to calculate the values of the sample mean and standard deviation for both machine 1 and machine 2. So the sample mean for machine 1 would be 474.06 plus 473.07 up to 472.88 divided by the sample size which is 10. So using the ST function in your calculator, 
you would get x bar 1 as 473 Similarly, x bar 2 would be 473.77. You add up all of the values from machine 2. Divide with the sample size, which gives you x bar 2 as 473.324. and 473.32. Next, we are to find the sample standard deviations of machine 1 and machine 2. The sample standard deviation of machine 1 would be 474.06. You sum the squares of each value of the sample up to 472.88. Minus, you sum up all of the values and then square them divided by the sample size divided by 10 minus 1 which is 9 and we square root this value which gives us 0 0.9130 class I need to make a correction because previously the formula that I discussed in another video was incorrect I think I wrote it as 1 over n minus 1 here and square root of the rest of the values okay please check that and make sure you write the correct formula in your exam. So the sample standard division of the second machine, 1 over 9, multiplied by the sum of 473.77 square up to 473.18 square minus sum up all of the values and square them this one divided by 10 and square root the whole thing and this gives us 0 0.7544 Zero point nine one three and zero point seven five four four. Okay, next we will discuss the test statistics. So, because the sample size is small, sigma one and sigma two are unknown and unequal. We will be using the t distribution. T star would be x bar one minus x bar two, which is the values here for seven three point five eight one minus four seven three point three two four minus mu one minus mu two comes from the null hypothesis which is zero divided by sample standard addition of x bar one minus x bar two and the formula if you still remember is the same as when the sample size is large square root of s1 square 0 0.9130 square over n1 so the sample size is 10 plus s2 square 0 0.7544 square over the sample size of machine 2 which is 10 this gives us 0. 
6862. The next step is the rejection region. And this depends on the alternative hypothesis. Because mu1 is different from mu2, we have a two-tailed test with alpha equals to 0 0.05. So alpha over 2 would be 0 0.025. The critical point here would take the value of t alpha over 2 with the degrees of freedom. Now, if you still remember the degrees of freedom, the formula is quite complex in this case. So let's check out the formula. Now, these are the formulas provided in your final exam. And the degrees of freedom, when the sample size are small and the population standard deviations are unknown and unequal, is given here. Okay. So let's calculate the degrees of freedom for your past equation. Degrees of freedom is given as S1 square. So you have 0 0.913 square divided by 10, the sample size, plus S2 square, 0 0.7544 square divided by 10 and square the whole thing divided by 1 square over n n1 square plus the same goes for your data from the second sample 0 0.7544 square divided by 10, the whole thing square divided by 9. This gives us 17.382. Now this contains decimal values, so we need to round it down to the nearest integer that gives us 17. Remember, in this case, we need to round down. And even if this is 17.8, you need to round it down to 17. So the degrees of freedom is 17 and alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. So the critical point is 2.110 and this will be negative 2.110. Now let's check the value of the test statistics again. It's 0 0.6862. So 0 0.6862 definitely falls in the non-rejection region. Let's make a decision and a conclusion. T star falls in the non-rejection region. So we accept H null. What happens when we accept H null? So the engineer is correct. Both machines fill up to the same mean net volume. I would write the whole thing out then. Okay, we answered the first question here. This question has 25 marks. Next, you are supposed to calculate a 95% confidence interval on the difference of the means and then provide a practical interpretation of the interval. Alright, so a uh, 95% confidence interval for mu1 
minus mu 2 would be x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus minus t square root of s1 square over n1 plus s2 square over n2. From our previous values, x bar 1 is 473.581 minus 473.324 plus minus so the critical value is also based from our previous finding. So 0 0.9130 square over 10 plus 0 0.7544 square over 10. I would like to invite all of you to calculate the values with me. Negative 0 0.5 332 to 1.0472. So let's interpret our findings. We are 95% confident that the difference in the mean net volume between machine 1 and machine 2 is between negative 0 0.5332 milliliters and 1.0472 milliliters. That's it. Okay, class, thank you so much for your attention. I wish you success in your studies. I'll see you in the next video.